Hi everyone, we are on Amos chapter nine. Um, this is our uh, pre-recorded Sunday school. I uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm just gonna start off with a prayer here. Thank you Lord for this time that I can just teach on Amos chapter nine. I ask that it blesses those who can hear it and see it into their minds, hearts, and into their spirit, Lord. Um, I thank you that you will uh, give me the knowledge to present this and that it just affects all of us, especially myself, Lord, in a loving, kind way and uh, invigorates us to be uh, better vessels for you, God, and allows us to uh, have courage in expounding your word and spreading the gospel with, with the love that it was meant to. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to get right into it. Um, we get into our text here. And we have, uh, here's where chapter nine starts off. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar and he said, smite the lintel of the door that the post may shake and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, thence thine shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence I will bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight into the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword and it shall slay them. And I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And the Lord God of hosts is he that touches the land and it shall melt and all that dwell therein shall mourn and it shall rise up wholly like a flood and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven and hath founded his troop in the earth and he that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name and ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaftor and the Syrians from Ker? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my, of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And it will bring, and I will bring in again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of the land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. I love that, saith the Lord thy God. He's a, he's a wonderful, beautiful God that just um, that has a plan. And the plan was already set in motion, and the Israelites are messing it up. And as we learn in the first eight chapters, is that that Amos has this prophecy for Israel, and, and they are rejecting him um, wholeheartedly, and they are stiff-necked, and they just, they just diss uh, Amos as just telling him to get out of their way, you know, you know what you're talking about, um, you know, we're, do, we're all right, you know, these Babylonians, they're not going to bother us, you know, but uh, obviously we know his history has shown that that's not true. So let's get into our first uh, first uh, verse here. Um, I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will say, uh, I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth 
of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. So we see that I uh, that that Amos is this is from Amos's point of view. I saw the Lord, and he's saying where he is standing upon the altar, and he said, uh, "Smite the lintel of the door." So who is the Lord speaking to? He's not speaking to Amos. You know, Amos is not having a dialogue with the Lord here. He is. He is actually, the Lord is actually commanding his angel that is there. Um, so we either have this image of an angel with maybe, you know, God there with him, uh, the voice being there, uh, directing this angel, telling him to smite the post, to shake, uh, shake it down, to make it, uh, cut them in the head. And the head being leadership, of course. Um, it's, uh, the, the leadership is responsible. Um, and it says, all of them, all leadership, and I will slay the last of them with a sword. So he's going to cut them in the head. They're going to die. Um, they're going to, uh, this is judgment. Okay. This is the last, this is the last chapter. And he is giving, the, he, he's giving the last word here, judgment at this altar. This is also the fifth vision. The fifth vision is very important um, because it, it, you know, it, this is the finalizing uh, vision of Amos, and he is, uh, he, he's not, he can't be quiet about it. He is our prophet. He burns in his heart to speak the words of the Lord. And he's saying that this will fall upon uh, these worshipers, and it would be the leadership that are worshiping the idols. And, and it's also saying that God sees them as they're worshiping these idols. He is there in this temple, See, and he sees them, what they're doing. And that's where he's making this judgment at. There's no escape. And, and it is futile to even try to escape. Uh, the Lord is saying here, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. He's saying that it, it's, it may look like escape, but it's really not. You're not going to deliver yourself from anything. You're just going to be that hamster on the wheel. So, this, so we go from this conversation with, uh, with, with, with God uh, ordering this angel and Amos witnessing it, to verse two. And though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them, though they shall climb to heaven, thence will I bring them down. So if you wanna dig yourself into the ground, or if you want to climb up to the highest point to get away, no, it's not gonna work. Any, any effort to escape, whether up or down, um, whether, whether the heaven or hell, it, you're not going to get there. But the, he is also exclaiming that is there is an urge to just cover up, to run, to get out from the wrath that's about to be showered down or come upon you. They are like, they're going to be like squirming worms looking to get out of the burning dry air. They will, he, he will reach downward uh, away from the light. And I say he, I mean these people. They're going to reach downward to try and get away out of this light. This is the truth that is coming upon them. The, the wrath is the truth and is coming upon them in this case. Um, so we see that they will want to escape from the truth. They want to, they're living in the lie. They want to believe the lie to the very end. And then we go to verse three. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. So we see that, that whether, uh, I want to explain that Mount Carmel, where it is situated, it's a limestone mountain and it's very, if you know anything about limestone, it's very porous. It's affected very much by the elements, and and it has many many caverns in there. Um, you can't go too. Far. It's very porous, like I, 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 should, I mean perforated, with with these caverns. These whether they be very tiny or very large, um, over time they have it has developed many caverns. And it's also by the water. So even when you're on top of this this Mount Carmel, you can view the water. Also, so we get this image of like, you can try and hide in this mountain, 
or you can jump in this water and get as deep as you want. No matter where you go, you're going to be condemned. You are, he will seek you out. He calls upon this serpent that will bite them. And if anyone knows um, anything about sea snakes is they are the most venomous snakes there are. Um, they're very aggressive. They don't like to be, they don't like people swimming around them and, and their poison is very effective. And even though they have little, very tiny fangs, you know, but they have, if you, they pierce you, you will be in a world of hurt. But he's, so he's saying that these people are marked and they will be found out wherever they go. They have sinned, they have transgressed against the Lord. And the thing is, is they, they know better. These people were given, they're people of the book. They have the knowledge, but yet they chased after other gods. So we see whether it's heaven, hell, a high top or high water, um, there's no escape for the guilty. Um, so, and then verse four, and though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword and it shall slay them and I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. So even though they give themselves up and they say, I'm not going to fight it, I'm going to give myself unto the enemy, they're going to be killed anyway. There's, there, you're, if you are destined, if you're one of the leadership, if you're one who is idol worshiping, leader, letting others into idol worship, you are going to be you're going to be smited, uh, as they say. You are, you, you are evil because you're causing other people to do evil. So God sees you as evil and he has to get rid of you. Um, you're not of any more use for the people of Israel. So we, they will feel the full fury. They will feel God is against them and God is against them. Why is he against them? Not because they're just these bad people. It's because of the sin and dis disobedience that they are committing, that they are committed to. It is not as if they made a mistake. It is that they are committed to sinning. And as we went, we can go over the first eight chapters. I went over this on how, how many things Amos was pointing out that they had uh, dedicated themselves to doing to transgress, transgress against the law that, the, that God has given them. In Psalms 34, 16, it says, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off their remembrance of them from earth. The captors are going to see them as, as an unworthy uh, living, uh, you know, of living and, and being a waste of resources and discard them as unclean animals. It's, it's customary that once a person is taken into captivity, that they are brought out to be sold, you know, as a slave or in assessed for value. The old and the young are also uh, usually less valuable where the women and the young men are assessed usually at a higher value. And then even further than that, they assess the intelligence or, and their resilience. Um, they test them for labor and craft um, is assessed and also their willingness, their willingness to bend to their new uh, captors. Uh, but here it seems that there will be a sense that the captors will just kill them for no apparent reason other than to see them at no worth. Um, so the evil that these people have done is so pervasive in them that their worth will not be evident. It will seem cruel, but a necessary step for Israel as a whole. In verse 5, and the Lord God of hosts is he that touches the land and it shall melt and all that dwell therein shall mourn and it shall rise up holy like a flood and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. Very interesting um, is that he God, I always find it interesting when God has one of his prophets mention Egypt. And at the same time, he's also talking about the land in which they're populating. This land is supposed to be blessed. Uh, this land is supposed to be theirs. And God is touching this land um, and it's melting. And, the, and it is like as if the land is mourning. Okay? It's rising up to them. Um, the land itself will suffer as a person mourns a, a dearly departed. And the land will, will either rise up or the people will be brought low. 
it is as if, it's as if you're just standing there and you just lose control of your body and your face just hits the ground. You know, it's either it's either your face going towards the ground or the ground coming up to you. Either way, that's what it feels like is that you're going to be brought low. Um, it'll be a feeling like you're just and at the same time, if you're falling and hitting the ground and that and then the ground suddenly melts, guess what? You are under the ground. It'll be a feeling like you're buried. As the waters that and it says now the waters that it says it says because the flood of Egypt. Now, I want to talk about this flood of Egypt and. And this is not a bad uh, thing that happens to Egypt. This is actually called the inundation in Egypt. And the inundation is uh, a yearly thing where the, uh, the heavy uh, torrential rains in Ethiopia cause the rivers to come, to, come, that come together, that feed into the Nile, that flow north um, out into the, uh, into the sea, the Mediterranean, that they become that it washes away all the old topsoil and brings down all this mountain uh, soil that that floods the whole plains at the at the mouth of the Nile, and it reinvigorates the the, the topsoil with with all these nutrients, and it allows them to assess a new and, and a better. Uh, harvest for that next year. If they didn't have these inunda inundations, if they didn't have the flooding, the, the crops would suffer greatly. And it has happened in the past. But he, Amos is giving this, this uh, comparison that, that, that they'll be drowned as if by the flood of Egypt. But that's for, that is a good and a bad thing. This needs to happen. If it doesn't happen, then they'll go on continuing continue to sin. They'll go on continuing to, uh, to, to transgress against the Lord, and they will be utterly destroyed. There'll be nothing coming out from them. They'll, they will be just spread out and never be able to return again. So we see that it is completely necessary that this, this purge of of this of this land must happen but it happens for a good reason it happens so that that the people of israel can be gleaned and come together again to be with their god in psalm 46 6 the heathen raged the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice and the earth melted so you see it's very powerful it's a powerful thing that needs to happen and let me see, let me get one more here. Yeah, I got one more. It is he that buildeth his stories in heaven and hath founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. I'm glad I got that last one in there because this is the signature of the Lord. This is how he signs off this vision, okay? This is how he, he, he is giving this message out and he is putting his signature, his stamp. This is, this is the Lord, it, this is his name, okay? He, he, is, uh, he is explaining who he is. He, is. he builds up his stories in heaven. He has founded his troop in the earth. He calleth for the waters of the sea and he poureth him out upon him. He is sovereign. He has, he has sovereignty over the heavens. He has sovereignty over the, the, the living things on the earth. He has sovereignty over the waters and he has the power to control them. He can move heaven and earth and, and, and sea. That's his name. It is all so powerful. And I'm going to end it there. That was verse six that we ended. We will start back up again on, on uh, verse seven next week. I thank you for uh, taking the time to, uh, to listen to this or watch this lesson. Um, it's just a nice little Bible study just between you and I. Um, I would like to hear your comments on it. And uh, if you uh, would like, like it and share it also. And we can get more feedback on these uh, studies. I uh, I just ask that you. We also have the uh, 
the in-person studies that we'll be recording also, that will be happening tomorrow uh, or every Sunday at 9.30, Trinity Assembly God, 2119 Hartford Ave, Johnston, Rhode Island. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can just come and talk about your book. Thank you for Amos chapter 9. And as we are going through it, Lord, thank you as it's blessing me, as I can teach it, Lord, let it strengthen the hearts, minds, and spirits, and let us be bold and courageous in talking about Jesus to whomever we meet. In his name, amen. Thank you.